haunted technology, devices that seem to have a mind of their own. One ghost, hunting team recently used its high, tech tools to track down the spirits. That always become of interest during this time of year at an investigation of a supposedly haunted house in a wooded area an hour south of Richmond, Virginia, called the Edgewood Plantation. The house is located in a place called the Edgewood Plantation. The house's uneven floorboards and squeaky doors make it an ideal location for a ghost to make their home. The owner contracted a private company known as Richmond Investigators of the Paranormal, also abbreviated as RIP, to investigate her home in search of specters. Chris Williams, the tech manager for the RIP team, runs down a few of the crucial pieces of equipment that they bring along with them on investigations. These include a temperature gun and an electromagnetic field EMF, detector. Yet, investigators are adamant that the EMF meter may also detect spirits in addition to electromagnetic fields. The EMF meter measures electromagnetic fields that are emitted by radio waves and damaged wires. Temperature guns are used to survey the environment for the icy patches that, according to ghost stories, are characteristic of haunted locations. Williams also suggests bringing along night, vision cameras, surveillance equipment, motion detectors, and a couple of walkie, talkies as safety precautions. Nevertheless, he does have one tool in his arsenal that isn't quite as technologically advanced. I usually prefer that everyone have one bottle of either holy water or holy ointment, he continues. It's just easier that way. I've never been in a situation where I needed it, and I truly hope I never will. The group does not come across anything dangerous during their investigation, but they are convinced that they have uncovered a ghost in the old slave quarters of the plantation. The fact that the ghost is of a cat, however, makes matters somewhat more complicated. Are you able to meow for us? Are you terrified of dogs? A question is posed by a member of the group. When the topic of dogs is brought up, the EMF meter reaches its highest point. They believe that this evidence, together with some peculiar photographs taken inside and outside the house, proves that the house is haunted. Skeptical Minds This dependence on technology is something that Lloyd Auerbach views with skepticism. He is a professor at a unique parapsychology school at Atlantic University in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and he believes that a person with psychic ability is better suited to ghost hunting than someone who possesses a lot of different types of equipment. Auerbach, on the other hand, believes that technology can provide some hints, and he compares this to following an unseen boat on a lake. We're using technology to detect the wake of the boat, he adds. From that, we can deduce that some things are going on in the environment, provided that we know there's a boat there, to begin with. Caveat, we're using technology to detect the wake of the boat, this comes right down to the meat of the issue. Many people have the misconception that ghosts are just about as real as unseen boats on lakes. Simply put, one's belief in the existence of ghosts is just that, a belief. It's nothing more than a myth Joe Nickel, a senior fellow at the Center for Inquiry, an independent research group, has the following to say on the matter. The purpose of Nickel's work is to provide a rational explanation for the phenomena that are observed during paranormal investigations. He has discovered natural occurrences that can explain all of the evidence that ghost hunters have shown him on their various instruments. According to Nickel, the high readings of electromagnetic fields EMF, that the investigators suspected came from the putative ghost cat are highly suspicious. They are taken aback by the fact that they are obtaining results in an old house. When in reality, there are a variety of non-ghost causes that could be causing the phenomena, such as bad wiring neighboring microwave towers, sunspot activity, and so on. Even the electronic equipment that they are carrying with them, such as walkie-talkies, TV cameras, and all the other electronic gadgetry, has electromagnetic fields. However, not everyone needs evidence based on scientific research. A survey that was conducted by Gallup a few years ago indicated that one-third of American adults believe in the existence of ghosts. Through the course of history, people have improved their productivity by employing various forms of technology. Even to this day, we continue to do so, but we no longer rely solely on technology to carry out physically demanding activities. These days, we can build computers that are sufficiently intelligent to compete with and even outperform us in a variety of domains. Whether embodied or not, 
artificial intelligence is currently used to do things like drive our automobiles, trade stocks, interact with our children, keep the elderly company, and provide warmth to the lonely. While this is going on, we use technology to compile enormous volumes of information about ourselves. This, in turn, is what we use to train intelligent computers that can make our lives easier and more individualized in ever more ways. Both our behavior and our very selves are subject to change if there is a shift in the way we relate to other people or technology. What kinds of difficulties do this new development present for people? I contend that we are currently witnessing the emergence of a new challenge to the idea of what it means to be human for the following reasons. Ah, we are stymied in our efforts to determine what makes us unique and are attempting to accept that computers have surpassed us in several respects, and b, how we use and interact with technology alters us in ways that we do not yet fully understand. The narrative of a guy who establishes a relationship with his computer operating system, whose voice is provided by Scarlett Johansson, is told in the film Her, which is set to be released in this region the month after the next. Joaquin Phoenix stars in the film. Regardless of whether or not you believe this love affair took place, the fact that it did presents an intriguing question that has preoccupied the minds of many brilliant thinkers over the past few decades. Can a computer have a consciousness of its own? The fields of computer science, psychology, and philosophy have each provided their unique answers to this question, which we discuss here with Phil McGuire, co director of the BSc degree in computational thinking offered at NUI Maynooth. He gives the idea that machines are incapable of recreating human consciousness, which is contrary to some of the more fantastical forecasts that have been made about a future governed by computers. Is it possible for a machine to have emotions? To quote Phil McGuire, the most important question to ask is, what exactly does it mean to have feelings? How can we identify systems that are capable of having experiences of this kind, and what criteria do we utilize to do so? Alan Turing, who is considered to be one of the founding fathers of computer science, proposed that if we are unable to differentiate the output of a computer from that of a human, then we should attribute the same qualities to computers that we do to people, such as the ability to think and have feelings. Some others, like John Searle, have argued that this is not sufficient on its own. He illustrated his point with the illustration of a rule book, which he said anyone could follow to carry on a conversation in Chinese. Even though it appears as though the person is talking in Chinese, they are just following a series of rules and have absolutely no prior familiarity with the subject matter. When will we reach the point in the development of technology? When we can say that machines are the same as humans, the problem with a machine is that you are aware that it was built by humans, and as a result, it operates according to a set of predetermined guidelines. It is hardly inconceivable that in the not-too-distant future, the output of a computer program could become so advanced that it would give the impression that you are communicating with another living being. Your computer may demonstrate intelligent behavior and complete Turing's test. But, there are a few more examinations that it does not pass. For instance, if you take the cover off, you'll notice that the system adheres to a predetermined set of guidelines, which are determined by the configuration of the electronic circuits. You will be able to dismantle the system into its constituent parts as soon as you are aware of the laws it is obeying, so putting an end to the delusion that it is feeling anything. It seems obvious that this is not something that can be accomplished with human awareness. How is the video? Do you enjoy it? Tell us in our comment section below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates.